Hello, Black Healing Matters family. This is Danielle here at the Black Healing Matters podcast, where we offer you ideas to hopefully move you one step closer to your healing. And today is, you know, a very special day. It's Thursday. <laughs> you know, every Thursday I have, I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to dance because I don't have to do all the talking. Yay! <laughs> but no, really, I love talking to you, Black Healing Matters family. But, you know, I love to bring other people's perspective because, you know, on Thursdays, we go out into this wide world and try to find somebody, rather catch someone in the act of doing the right things. Yes, it's doing the right things Thursdays. And here on Doing the Right Things Thursdays, you know, we have interviewed several people, uh, really phenomenal interviews. And if you haven't listened to some of our prior segments on th Doing the Right Things Thursday, yeah, you, you owe it to yourself to go back and listen to some of these powerhouse interviews, people with diff from different walks of life and different perspectives that you maybe even never considered before, maybe even never heard of before. And as you know, the reason that we do this segment here on the Black Healing Matters podcast is because oftentimes as Black people, we don't get to see other Black people in the act of doing good, in the act of doing great things. And so today I bring you just that a man in the act of doing great things, okay? <laughs> and so who is our guest today? Our guest today, you may remember his name if you watched our holiday healing panel. His name is Mr. Kenny Jones, the Comeback Kid. He is an expert at guiding people back to their resilient roots without shame so that they can stand firm in their power and harvest. As an author of an Amazon international best-selling book, Comeback Season, The Untapped Art of, C of Mastering Your Resilience, Kenny empowers business owners and doers to embrace their personal stories as core of their success, no matter how difficult or unpopular. He speaks candidly about how to turn pain into purpose while healing from revealing. Now an entrepreneur and successful business coach, Kenny lights a true fire and taps into the author in, in all of his comeback kids. His business approach is realistic and personal and has positioned numerous entrepreneurs to their best-selling author dreams. So that's right. You heard me right. If you are an aspiring author, which I'm sure many of you are, Please perk your ears, go get yourself a pen and some paper because it's about to go down with Mr. <laughs> the Comeback Kid, Kenny Jones. <laughs> Kenny, are you there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am here. Hi, hi, <laughs> hi. How are you, Dang? <laughs> I am great. I'm great now that you're here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel the same way. My goodness. I'm so honored to be here with the Black Healing Matters family. I'm a huge fan of the work that you're doing, and I'm just so honored to be here to share a little bit of uh, my story here today. Thank you so much. Yes, it is a pleasure to have you back here. Um, you know, the first time that we uh, that we recorded together for the healing uh, panel, mm -hmm. oh man, the responses were so great. And I think, I mean, I know that was largely due to you as well. And I just wanted to be able to give you the spotlight because I know that you have a lot going on and I know that you have a lot to offer as far as healing and, and just encouragement. And what you do is so unique and how you came about, how that all came about is really, it's a special story. So can you tell us a little bit about how and why you became an international book now best-selling uh book coach <laughs> oh my gosh uh yeah you, you know what's interesting Danielle is that you're right it, it the way it came about was very unconventional um so I, I guess I'll go back from the beginning um I in July and I turned 37 years old this past July and I um was getting ready to transition in my career to a new position um, but I did not have a book. I didn't have a website. I didn't have any 
any stain in this space of helping people heal. Although I've always been really passionate about helping college students and mentoring college students and just being a great mentor, I've never been able to put it in any type of form. Um, so I decided that um, in the transition to my new career, um, that I would write a book. <laughs> and I had three weeks to write this book. So I went to my vice president um, in I'm sorry, almost the end. Three weeks? Yes, three weeks. <laughs> One, two, th three weeks? <clears throat> three weeks. Uh, <laughs> So um, I went to my vice president and I told him that I had found another position and that I would be transitioning. And he said to me that, um, and I was giving my two weeks. And so he said, well, because I work in a college and we was preparing for the next academic year, he said, well, Kenny, we may, we may not need you for the two weeks, but we will pay you as if you were here. And I said, oh, well, if you can get me that in writing, then my last day will be Friday, right? So he got it in writing from HR. I came home to my, my, my house and I put on Game of Thrones. Now, Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows, but I put it on and I realized that like I had so much that I had come back from. I had been through a lot of different things in my life and um, decided that I was going to turn the TV off and I was going to write my book. So the two weeks that it took me that uh, the two weeks that I put in for myself and I always give myself a week bef to, before my next position to sort of prepare, I use those three weeks to write my book. Um, and then I started, as I started to write, I started to realize that my story was coming out very naturally. Um, and so many people had seen some of the things that I had been through, but nobody knew the entire story. And then I realized that there were so many other people who went through the same things. Mm -hmm. um, then I started to meet people who wanted to write books. So after I wrote my book, it became an international bestseller in two weeks. So that's a five week sort of span of time. Um, and then I was like, my goodness, if I can do this, then I can help other people do the same thing. And so that's what I started. And so I, ha I had an inaugural cohort of students who just wanted to write their stories. And for me, it wasn't about any of the right things. It wasn't about, you know, making sure that you had the right publisher and then like you had grammar and all that. I just wanted to hear people's story. And then mm -hmm. it sort of took off from there. And so now we're about 30 authors in <laughs> um, and I've been doing this work now for about three months. So that's how I became one. Wow. <laughs> and this is so new and fresh and exciting. You s okay. But what you said, turn off the TV and write a book, man. <laughs> Because <laughs> so many of us, right, so many of us just sort of sit and we hope, right, that we mm. dream. But dreams don't do anything. Dreams only come to you when you're asleep. And even daydreams come to you when you're not paying attention. You're sort of gazing, right? So I realized that if I wanted to get something out there, that I needed to do it without permission. And so I did it. And I promise you, I wrote the book and it was, it was unconventional. I used voice memos and I had lots of different notes and journal entries and things. And then it just sort of came together. So yeah, yeah, you got to get up and just do it. And I think that's, that's how that, that writing that book was a part of my healing, which we'll get to in a second. Um, mm -hmm. But absolutely, get up, turn the TV off and start writing. Man, <laughs> that, I mean, it's, it's so simple and to the point, but it's profound. I mean, that yeah. when you said it, it stuck out to me. I turned off the TV, decided to write a book. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, most people like don't do that. So yeah, that that's mm -hmm. phenomenal. The fact that you did it and that you obviously had so much of a story to tell mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. But do you believe that everyone has a story to tell? Or, you know, is there like some kind of criteria that you need to have before you should consider actually writing a book? Absolutely. I, I, I don't think that there's a criteria at all, right? And I think that's the biggest misconception about being an author. Um, I tell a lot of my comeback kids that, you know, if you want to write four sentences over and over and over and over again for 100 pages and you want that to be your book, then that will be your book. I remove the idea that there has to be a frame for you to be a good author. And that's, I think a lot of times, especially in the black community, we are always put in these boxes of what is good. We are always comparing ourselves to 
somebody else and being like, okay, if this person did it this way and everybody thinks that they're good in order for me to be good, I have to do the same things. And I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. So yes, I do believe that everybody has a story. And if you're able to breathe and be able to get up and put your feet on the ground, then you have another opportunity to tell that story. And if that's a book, if that's a podcast like you're doing, if that's a web series, if that's a show, if that's a song, whatever it is, everybody has a story. And nobody, nobody has written your story. And that was the thing that I kept remembering is like, sure, there are millions and millions and millions of books out there, but not one book that Kenny wrote. So right. I'm gonna write it. That's the truth all day. And you, you mentioned, you said something about um, healing through your writing. Do you mm -hmm. find, I mean, now that you, you have 30 authors and mm -hmm. growing, and now you're growing. So <laughs> with you plus your, your cohorts, uh, do yeah. you find that this writing process is kind of a form of healing in, in a way? Yes, absolutely. I mean, especially in this world of heavily, um, heavy, heavy technology where people are always on social media and there's video and there's all these sort of ways that people vent. Mm. Um, I think there's a magical, there's a magical piece in sitting with yourself and writing about yourself and your story. Um, when I wrote my book, uh, going back to those spaces that I've sort of tried to forget about and all of the healing that I was trying to do from that I got no other healing in my life other than when I wrote those when I wrote those chapters um, and it's interesting because you know I, I obviously was like okay well if I'm going to write it has to be in these places but then I also thought about like yeah but this is my story and I have to relive this and I have to remember how I came back from all of that stuff so um, yeah, th there's, there's, a, there's a beautiful piece when you have to sit with yourself and write um, your story again, and you have to relive it and go back into it so that you, you sit in it and know how you came back from it or how you handled it or how you were able to become the person you are today because of it. So absolutely. I have to ask though, you know, although I, I totally understand what you're talking about with healing. And, and how, you know, you grow through that experience. But yeah. when, you're, when you're writing this down, you know, writing down these most intimate personal experiences with the hopes that somebody else will read it, did that mm -hmm. scare you? Or do you find oh that with your cohorts and it's just like, <sighs> like I'm naked, you know? <laughs> is, uh, yeah, absolutely. Great question. That is the biggest fear of everybody, even myself. Um, the thing is, though, you know, people are going to research you anyway, right? And if, if, you, if people are in your life or in your space, they're going to want to be nosy anyway. So you might as well just own, own your stuff and put it out there in a way that is lucrative for you, right? So sure, absolutely. I was petrified of people being able, being able to read my story and judge it. However, however... Like, like you said earlier in my, in my intro, you, you can't heal what you don't reveal, right? So you, you must be ready to stand in your own selfness. You must be ready to be able to own, you know, the, 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 pro, the parts of you that may not be as popular. And I think a really good example of this is how um, back in when Eight Mile was out, when Eminem did that rap battle, and he sort of went in and talked about all the things that he was struggling with, about how he was on welfare and that he was white, and he said everything that he that the opponent was going to say about him first. And so it's the same idea here. So sure, yeah, if you're nervous about people reading your story, then wouldn't you rather you putting it out there before them making their own opinions about it? So yeah, all the time. But the beautiful thing about, about that is that no matter what you do, I don't care if you write the best book and it has no errors, somebody's going to have a negative thing to say about it. So you might as well just do, do what you love and, and surround yourself with the people who will listen. Do what you love and surround yourself with the people who will listen. That's good. Yep. <laughs> yeah that's a, because it's tweetable right there that's, that's yeah <laughs> because the thing is you know and i and i write about this in in one of the chapters 
um, called Winter is Coming. Um, and Winter is Coming talks about um, the earth in all of its glory and splendor. Um, if it goes through a winter time, right? No matter if the summer was amazing, if the spring was amazing, if the autumn was amazing, if the earth can go through a winter time where things are dark and gloomy and gray, then what makes us as its inhabitants any different, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so as we are going through that winter time, you, you, I, I, I start to think about like when I was coming back from my situations and I introduced this thing called a baby walk mentality. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that now. Mm-hmm. Um, so the baby walk mentality talks about when babies are young and they're learning how to walk, they're consistently falling. And you want to know what a baby does not say? Yeah, this walking thing is not for me. <laughs> like that does not happen they naturally get up and try again and they'll fall and then naturally get up and try again and they don't concern themselves about who watched them fall they don't concern themselves about the opinions of people who are in the room right mm-hmm. they just do and the people who are in the room usually love the baby unconditionally and they reach out their hand and say oh my gosh you can do it try again pick up the baby and they try mm-hmm. right but then when we become adults then we remove that mindset right we're afraid to watch we're afraid that people are going to watch us fall we forget about the people who love us unconditionally then we start worrying about the opinions of others to your point about if people are going to be scared about or nervous about people reading their story so you know, if we adopt that mentality back and being like, listen, I'm going to surround myself with people who love me unconditionally. When I do fall, I'm going to get up naturally and I'm going to keep walking. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and so, again, that goes back to your point about healing. And I think that that is important for us to remember as we are not only writing our books, but just being ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Whew, so true. So true. There's a lot of truth in there. I hope you guys are writing notes black healing matters family because i am i'm over here taking notes <laughs> while you're talking like <laughs> on the sneak like <laughs> oh my goodness um, no, seriously though but i have to ask you i know that you have um you very wisely started to not just help yourself and but also helping other people to mm-hmm. tell their much needed stories like much they need to get these stories out and Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. you know helping people write their books helping them through that process uh you talked about a little bit how um you know some a lot of people feel like this you know vulnerability when Mm -hmm. sharing their stories but i wanted to know um are there any other particular um issues that you find in the black community possibly specifically if you have any experience with that i know you have experience with black people (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but in the black community, do you have any, um, you know, particular experience with issues that people have with sharing their truth? Mm, so that's an excellent question. Um, yes, I, I particularly with us as black people, um, we are we inherited some really deep scars. Um, from what happened to our ancestors um, and how we have been conditioned to uh, talk about our pain. Um, From everything that I've learned about what happened to our ancestors um, during slavery times, we have been taught to be silenced and we've been taught to not show any pain at all, even when we are literally wobbling from pain. Um, so as that sort of graduated itself to us as the descendants of people who were enslaved, that now has manifested in ways that we don't talk about our pain. We don't say to someone, hey, I'm struggling, or hey, I messed up, or hey, I need help. So particularly in the Black community, mental health and, and struggle and and all of that, it's, it's a taboo subject. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as to saying is that when we do struggle publicly, we're the most difficult to each other, right? Mm-hmm. So personally, I've fell in front of a whole community of people where um, there were articles written about me, 
um, where people sort of made their own opinions without even reaching out to me and figuring out like what actually happened. Um, and then I was ridiculed because people had their own opinions about what was written. Um, and to some people that was a proverbial fall, right? And in that space, I had come into my own house. I had locked all of my doors. I turned my phone off and I just sulked. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Right? I didn't know how to even say or to have it even stand up for myself, even when my own people sort of drug me through the mud. So yes, absolutely. I do think that we inherit those practices and those uh, habits of silencing our own pain. And we don't know how to stand up in those spaces in our community. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I just as you were talking, I was just kind of feeling into that. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I mean, it, it was it was literally 2016 is when it happened, and it was one of the most tumultuous times in my life, right? But that's I, again, I had an opportunity to come back from that, and so, um, and the only way that I was able to do that was to be able to say, I struggled in this space. I need help, and where can I find that help? not only in myself, but the people who love me unconditionally, who know the truth about Kenny. Um, even when I made some mistakes where I was putting my power in others and trying to please everybody else and not having my own confidence, people still loved me and I didn't even know, mm. right? Um, it was a, and I know so many, so many more people in our community have went through things that were even tougher mm. and didn't say anything. Um, and, and are afraid because they don't want people to ridicule them. So absolutely. Yeah. I think it was, it was several uh, weeks ago. It's, it was maybe in the, maybe even back November or December when we did mm -hmm. an episode on judgment and Ooh. how, yeah, on how judgment keeps so many of us from our healing. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, well, many of us do that just un unconsciously. We judge unconsciously mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. without even thinking about how this, how our words and our energy could affect the mm -hmm. people that we're judging. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what you're saying is is really a testament to how not only judgment is detrimental, but how we also have to be able to stand up and and uh and take the arrows and, and and you know and 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 keep moving not keep moving in this you know without acknowledging our pain but to right, say right. Hey, that arrow hurt me you know mm -hmm. that hurt me mm -hmm. um instead of just taking all the arrows and and and, and pretending that you know we're not hurt um, the beautiful thing about us though too um and this talks about resilience and why I even called the book what I called it mm -hmm. is that people don't know that we're resilient because they don't know that we're struggling, right? Resilience comes from a place of coming back from something, but we don't share that. So if I introduce Danielle to people and, or, you know, typically we don't say, oh, that person is resilient. Why? Because we don't know what they've come through. All we know is the things that they've shown us either on social media. And so the one thing that became very clear to me, even in writing my books, even like, and, and helping my, my, my comeback kids um, was we not only come from a, uh, we're descendants of ancestors that have struggled, but we're also descendants of ancestors that are impeccably resilient. The mm. things that they have gone through as, as a people and been able to still get up every single day and have faith and still speak smile with their families and hold each other and help each other knowing that they were going to be brutalized and beat and having to work all day for nothing and be treated like nothing but still being able to stand up and be like i am going to over overcome this we come from that mm -hmm. and so somewhere down the line we forgot yeah. we so forgot true. and we started to judge each other because you know we started to become, uh, there, there was a time in history where people said it's okay for us to be, um, to have access to different things. And now we become judgmental of each other, mm -hmm. not realizing that it is 
each other that have always held each other together. Yeah. Right. And we forgot that that space. That right there, that is a large part of the reason that I started this, this journey with Black Healing Matters, because Mm -hmm. I I realized that nobody was going to help us, but us. And that Mm -hmm. not just that, that, but it's not like we out here by ourselves, but that we, we do support each other. We do love and care for each other you know, very contrary to what we see and hear in the media. So often we do support each other. We do care and love on each other. We keep each other and Mm -hmm. we always have. And so, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're right that, you know, we've been through so much and resilience is the, is a matter of comeback. That's awesome. Yep, that's yep. so awesome all right um i know that you're busy but i gotta ask for the for the some tips because we we have talked a lot about <laughs> <laughs> some of the, the issues and i agree wholeheartedly and i think black healing matters family can also resonate with what we're talking about here mm-hmm. but just from your experience um as, as far as helping people and of course helping yourself heal and tell your story do you have any kind of tips or um you know practical advice for people who are trying to bring forth their own message whether it be um well let's just say through a book since you you're a book coach so what would okay you recommend? well uh i do there's a couple i have so many so many lessons that i learned um in this journey and continue to learn i learned so much from my students um and so by no means am I, you know, the say all end all. So I, I definitely want to start with that framework. Um, but what, if I had to think about a couple tips, um, one of them would be to think big and realistically. Now, what I mean by that is um, be realistic. Know that if one person hears your message, a life has changed, right? Um, I always say that there's, you know, one earth, but 7.1 billion worlds. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, if I can change, I know I'm going to change a world Mm -hmm. because I know that realistically one person is going to hear my message. So the first tip is think big on a world, like on, on a global scale, but be realistic that, and knowing that if one person has changed, then you've done better than everybody else who's not saying anything. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, another tip that I will, I can think of is, is show up regardless of your pain. <sighs> show up regardless of your pain. Um, it, it's important for you to speak up, even if your voice is shaking. Um, mm-hmm. That was something that somebody said to me. Um, when I was going through my storms is you have to find your voice and you got to show up. And if that looks like a book, if it looks like a speech, if it looks like a song, if it looks like a podcast, if it looks like an interview, a conversation, you got to show up, right? Because that is how you move beyond pain. Pain will happen, as I said earlier in the podcast, you know, winter is coming for all of us. It doesn't matter how great your life is. It's just how you prepare for that winter. Um, and then the last tip I guess I can think about is um, consistent and authentic lane creation. Consistent and authentic lane creation. It don't matter how many people are doing what you're doing. No one is doing it the way that you would do it. It's a million cars on this highway, right? Just like when we're traveling, you know, to and fro, so thousands and thousands and millions and millions of cars are going the same way, but nobody's driving your car. So mm-hmm. if you are like, well, there's no lane for me. I need to know, you know, where I fit in. You showing up is where you fit in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I think is, imp- that's, those are tips for me that I think are important in bringing forth your message because bringing forth your message is your healing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got I totally agree. Um, you know, in this podcast journey, I'm feeling this I felt the same things. <laughs> so I've been through these steps and yeah. I couldn't agree more. 
You're so <laughs> right. Okay, just to recap, I just want to recap, so make sure you wrote these down, Black Healing Matters family. I wrote them <laughs> down, okay? <laughs> All right? So think big, but realistic, okay? Yeah. Know that if you changed your life, that you did something great, like you have mm -hmm. been effective. Um, show up regardless of your pain. I love sure. it. I totally agree with <laughs> that, you know? This podcast is six days a week, fam. I'm <laughs> telling you, I've had some pain in the past few months. <laughs> That and that, yeah. not want to show up, okay? Yes, yes, yes but, yep, yep. You know, alas, the show goes on. And number three, consistent and authentic lane creation. Do you right? Like you, like you said, you said it perfectly. By showing up, that's where you fit in. Wherever you show up, that's how you fit in. And yes. yes. Totally yep. agree with that. That is gold. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kenny. Oh I appreciate God, you're you. Welcome. We appreciate you. The Black Healing Matters family appreciates you immensely. Oh, and oh. so as we wrap up here, where and how can the folks reach you in case oh. they want to write a book or they may, you know, are just interested in connecting with you? Oh my gosh. Um, so if you want to connect with me, um, there's a couple ways that you can do it. I am um, on Facebook. You can look me up, Kenny Jones. Um, uh, there is a profile picture of me of this orange shirt. So <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Kenny Jones on Facebook. If you are on Instagram, um, you can look me up, KJ Speaks Easy. It's all one word, K-J-S-P-E-A-K-S-E-A-S-Y. Um, and then you can go to my website, uh, which is www.kjspeakseasy.com, um, where you'll get to learn more about not only um, if you are interested in writing a book, but I also have um, things where people just want to just connect and get more information about their own resilience, um, where I have one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with people. There's an opportunity for you to become a comeback kid in my group sessions. Um, you could be a part of the Resilience Project, which is really for people who are struggling with really um, moving past the pain of their story. So even if you're not interested in writing a book, but you still want to be able to get through your own pain, there's an opportunity for you. And I'd love to be able to connect with you and to work with you and talk with you through that. So once again, www.kjspeakseasy.com. Instagram, KJ Speaks Easy, and Facebook, Kenny Jones. Yes. And Kenny, I just got to ask you, when is your next cohort starting? Just in ah. case you're Oh, yeah. Great question. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my next cohort, I am so, first of all, I'm so excited. Every time people ask me about my cohorts, I just get really, really giddy. Um, <laughs> my next cohort will be starting uh, the mid of March, the mid week of March. So I'm thinking, not mid mid-month of March. Mm -hmm. um, so I am now starting to take inquiries for that. So um, there's an opportunity once again on my website to sign up for that. Or you can connect with me through Facebook if you're like, you know, I just want to find you personally. You can do that. But March is my next cohort. Um, but seats are filling up really fast. So um, I would love to be able to connect with, <laughs> for those of you who are like, if this is the if this is what you've been waiting on and if this is your sign, then let's talk. Let's get it done. It's a setup, folks. If you've been writing, wanting to write a book, this is the time. This is the man to talk to you about it. And and that's another reason I wanted to have him as a guest today because I know that there's so many of us who have these these dreams and you know they were just kind of pregnant with these these mm -hmm. um these intentions and, mm -hmm. and writing a book is a huge one and many people embark on at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and this is the guy you need to talk oh, to you're serious about writing i think book. i appreciate that there yo because I, I you know another thing that I, I i see even when i was doing the research and not to say that i didn't do research before i started writing but i didn't i didn't see a lot of us helping us write books, if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be frank. Um, I saw the Katie, um, sorry, not the Katie. Uh, yeah, Katie O, his last name is super long and he's, you know, uh, very popular in helping writing books, but, you know, I didn't see us and I wanted to, to create a space to do that for us. So again, um, there's that. And also if you are interested in getting my book, Comeback Season, The Untapped Art of Mastering Your Resilience. You can also uh, purchase a copy off of my website 
for that. So, no. Awesome. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you so much, Kenny. It has been a journey and a page <laughs> of notes. So I appreciate you so much. You're so welcome. And, Thank you. you. Know, we got to have you back later after, um, you know, you for your next book or for your next cohort or even oh my gosh, you know, your next it. great author. So I hope maybe one of those next great authors will be from our Black Healing Matters family. I hope so. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then they could come in and talk about their experience and then it'll be awesome. Man, I'm, I am putting this out into the universe now that, and, that you will have a great best-selling author who comes from the Black Healing Matters community. You hear that, it Black Healing Matters family? <laughs> it will happen. It will happen. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> I'm calling on you. You got that book in you. You got to let it out. Let it out to the, for the world to see. Appreciate you so much, Kenny. Mr. Kenny Jones, again, folks, the comeback kid. Make sure you reach out to him. Again, If I, I said it before and I'll say it again. He's the man to talk to in, about books. Mm -hmm. And on that note, Black Healing Matters family, I love you. Mm -hmm. Stay blessed. And as always, Black Healing Matters. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.